Hey everybody, this is Rustin Rose with Metal Holic and Metal Nation Radio, and with us today, Andy and CJ of Thy Art is Murder, all the way from Australia, of course. It's awesome to sit here and talk to you. You're one of the interviews I was most looking forward to doing, because uh, I'm very much into the whole secular humanist thing, and the new album and everything. You know, I saw you talking about it a little bit, so I want to get into that, but... You guys have done a lot of U.S. touring so far, but this is your Mayhem debut. How's this been going so far? We're five days into it. It's been good, man. It's just been super hot. Like, we're all, like, burning and tanning up pretty hard. Um, Let's get brown. It's good. Yeah, I'll go brown, but, like, unfortunately, we have a redhead in our band, and um, he has to be, like, bathed in a suntan lotion, like, every second of the day, so... He ran out yesterday, so he took an umbrella around. It's not a, not a good look when you're nearly six and a half foot tall, white, redhead, and you have a multicolored polka dot umbrella. And your dotty yourself is spotty for sure. Yeah, it's it's sort of hard out on this tour, although I hear it's sort of like a, a summer camp for adults, you know? Definitely. All the stuff that goes on. So, and, and you'll find out more as you go, because we're like I said, we're only day five here in Boise, Idaho. but. How, how does a tour like Mayhem, where you're going, you know, how does this compare to, to doing your own tour when you're going from town to town as opposed to going with a bunch of other bands? Sure. It's fun. It's definitely less pressure, I guess. Like, there's no sound check, there's no early loading, there's no pressure on us, you know. We rock up, we change over, and we try and play the best set that we can. Um, 25 minutes so it's you know yeah. it's a little bit of a break from playing for an hour or so and sound checking you know that that can get a bit long you know from the time you start playing to finish is like eight or nine hours today i mean in all the days on mayhem it's you know an hour's work <laughs> and then we get to relax and watch slayer so what's the downside it's like Besides 115 the degrees outside <laughs> every outdoors. day yeah, the outdoors, everything's dry and dirty, and um, that's probably the only downfall to it, really. Everything's positive. We get to meet a whole bunch of bands we've never heard of before, and right. play with some bands that are iconic in metal and have been for the history of metal, you know, such as King Diamond and Slayer. And uh, I think the, the hottest band that we look most forward to watching and playing with is Code Orange. The band's from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and they're incredible. They should be playing further up the bill. They're right. probably the highlight band on this tour. With all due respect to Slayer, that that's the band that the musicians are here to see. Wow. And they put them like so early at the beginning. Well, today they played just, first. Yeah, just about Usually everybody's they're playing gonna miss second, them. but it's it's bullshit. I said something on stage about it the other day. This band is this band is going to be something real special, and they're already something special. And I think it's disrespectful towards them to put them on so early when they are such a great band. I think that was sort of the difficult thing this year because this is a more scaled down version of what we usually have for Mayhem and there's not enough of the name bands in the earlier part of the show so to draw a lot of the early people in to see some of the bands like Code Orange they haven't heard which is really sort of I think the downfall of this particular year's tour yeah. you know it's great to see Slayer and King Diamond but a lot of people if those are the only names they really know they're not going to come till later and that's exactly. really sort of tragic so but all right so let's talk about the new album Holy War out yesterday right two days here. ago Monday Monday, Monday. Oh, yeah, Tuesday here in America. Yeah, the industry because no, no, Monday in America. Tuesday's generally release day. We got some kind of special oh, event to put well. out on Monday. We had a worldwide release on Friday for World Minus America and UK. And uh, to try and squish that in and not let it leak out so right. much, we, uh, we got an extra day advance. Nice. Well, supposedly we're all going to be going to one universal day every week around yes, the world. Yes, I think it's going to be Monday or Friday. Fridays, it's I think it is. Yeah. Months. Something like Smart. that. But, um, okay, so tell us about the new record, because Holy War definitely seems heavier and, if possible, even darker than the previous record. Yeah, well, I think it, it's definitely, it's darker because it's real. Mm -hmm. Like, like our, our previous records and bands in our style of metal and any style of metal, we feel that um, there's a lot of like metaphors and stories made up to really get a cr to push across what you're trying to say, and you know we 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 succumb to that sort of writing for most of our career, and and now I think you know I think it was Andy that said 
before we started riding, like, let's sing about real shit. Let's, like, have our finger on the pulse, talk about relevant things and real things and talk about them in the real way, like, rather than coming up with some story to try and push across what you're trying to say, but it's like, you're disguising it with a story. So this record is more about real things, you know, such as um, religious, political issues, social issues, environmental issues, animal welfare, um, the protection of children. Like there's there's a lot of like strong topics on this album, and I think that the lyrics fit the the music because uh, Sean and Andy wrote for a long time before we started recording and. We put everything into this record that, that we had. You know, there was nothing else left out. We literally put every single idea that we could come up with into this record and tried to be as smart and intellectual as possible, I guess. And it actually was, and it's like, like I said, when I first heard it and I, I saw some of the lyrics for it and everything, I'm like, this really hits home for me. You know, and of course, I'm in this weird place, Boise, Idaho, where it's a very religious state and everything, and we're so yeah, backwards in so it? many things. It's horrible. Yeah, it is. But, you know, I mean, but even the entire country here, I mean, we just passed the same-sex marriage thing this last week. You know, how ridiculous then? We've got more on saying, I'm moving to Canada. It's been legal in Canada for decades. Oh, no, you know? I'm not. It just goes like, to illuminate how stupid they Yeah, right and, you know, and then you get this kid down in South Carolina that goes and shoots a bunch of uh, African-American people, yeah, and suddenly we've got another it. race thing going on, and we got to get rid of this flat. And it's, it's just stupid, and this is going on all over the world, but it's just really dumb down here in America. And we're supposed to be, supposed to be among the leaders of the world, and it's just sort of embarrassing, yeah. you know? No, that's right, man, and, and that's what we wanted to sing about. We wanted to sing about real things and things that are affecting the world today and see how, like, how too PC the world is, you know? You, or you can't say this or you can't say anything about this group of people or that group of people or anything because they're going to get angry and then they're going to do this. It's like, well, that, that's not right, you know? Like, it's... It was very hard at, at points for us to write because we needed to we had to walk the line. Yeah, you know, uh, no one should be free of criticism because of their niche. Um, but it's very, it's a delicate line to walk where you could be labelled a bigot right. or discriminatory versus just being, you know, openly and intellectually critical and not not a, some kind of biased hatred towards a group, but you know, really looking at it from a humanist perspective and, and dissecting it. Yeah, it's hard to have a real conversation anymore because everybody's ready to jump on the first word they can twist out of context. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And that's so. that's one thing where we're very different. People like us that are, you know, agnostic or atheists, we you know, we respect other people's religious views or political views and we're not gonna get like our panties in or not because we don't agree with what these other people are saying. We can we can more than happily sit down and have an educational and intellectual discussion and and respect their view as long as they respect ours. And, Absolutely. You know, and that's one thing I think a lot of people think of. They think that we're just these heinous pissed off dudes that just want to burn everybody and if we meet a Christian or a, uh, a Muslim or a Jewish person that we're going to hate them, which is clearly not the case. It's, mm -hmm. we, it's not the people that we hate, it's the ideal and the, 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 it's, it's complicated, I guess. <laughs> All right, so now you guys put a lot into this, as you said, but did you approach this album any differently than you did when you were doing Hate? Because, you know, you got a lot of, you got a lot of recognition in, in the industry and throughout the world with all the touring you did with Hate, which really raised the level for you guys. So when you went in to do Holy Wars, did you go in with a different mindset or...? The songs were collected over a longer period of time, but I think the biggest difference, going back to the, the lyrics, is the last one we kind of just were writing piecing together fragments of lyrics like this time we all sat down in a room and we thought about the concept of the song first before we started writing you know it's kind of like sitting on a guitar and noodling around and then discovering a riff or composing the riff in your head and then figuring it out on the guitar we try to like premeditate the songs we sit down and like what about this idea and what about this and like how can we twist the view of the idea to like make it more creative so, so that was the biggest difference for us was all sitting down and thinking about cool ideas you know? and given that you guys only get 25 minutes on this tour how much of holy wars are you guys going to be playing two songs two songs 
Maybe three if our drummer, you know, pulls his head in. <laughs> we got we got a, a circle pit anthem of the year ready to go. Yeah. We're just waiting on him. He's got to get his D beat locked in, you know. It's, it's, it's very, very important. Very hard song to play, especially on drums. But we don't want to play it until it's like polished because polished. it's like as you said, it's it's a crucial song. It'll be the circle pit song of the year for any band 2015. Nice. All right, so before we get out of here, what's on tap after Mayhem for you guys? Because you guys have been road warriors. We go back to Europe again. Yep, we came straight from Europe to this. We're going to go do two headline shows in the UK and then a couple of festivals around Europe for a week. And then we get seven weeks off, seven or eight weeks off. We still got to do the Aussie tour in that time too. That's in October. Oh, okay. So we get, yeah, we get some time off, uh, which is rare for us. This year we're actually going to have had six months off, which is unbelievable. Biggest break we've had in five years. <laughs> yeah, you guys have been going non-stop. Last year we for ten months, so. All right, so last thing, just a pointless question of the week. If you could permanently remove any one thing from the world right now that's pissing you off, what would that one thing be? Oh, religion. Religion? Yeah, I'm... Um, the influence in politics, especially with the Republican Party in the United States, is absolute poison. And if it stopped existing and all of a sudden people stop being absolute morons, that would be the greatest thing for me. Yeah, I'd say religion as well, but closely followed by pollution. Nice.